tonight's show, I'm going to be joined by noted attorney Richard Solomon. Richard, what are we going to be talking about? It depends. Are my adversaries listening? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you're an attorney. (laughs) Well, if they're listening, it's topic A. But if they're not, it's the, the, the secret methods to successful strategies in negotiation. Once again, we are number three in New York AM radio, according to the Nielsen ratings. That's a big deal. You know why we got that? Because of you. Every single listener, thank you so much for the trust you put in that we're going to deliver incredible business content week in and week out, and we deliver. Um, Tonight's show, again, featuring Richard Solomon. But Richard Solomon, you're an attorney. You're in the courtroom dealing with clients. You're dealing with all types of scenarios. Sometimes, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a term zero-sum game. Sometimes you got to give a little bit. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes, they, So, I, you know, we're going to hand over the floor to you, but it's not a simple thing. There is no, right, they, let's, you know, a, a straight, you know, like to get from my office to JFK, you get on the Bell Parkway. If there's traffic, you go up Pennsylvania Avenue. But you're dealing with negotiating it's a lot of fine points here. There's a lot of skill that's involved. Richard, where do we go from here? You, it's your title, Master Negotiating Tactics. You make it sound simple. Huh? Hey, well, well, first of all, thank you for the it's honor of being here. It's always great it's being with you. Yes. It is a privilege to be here, and it's a privilege to be on the iHeart Radio Network. Yes, thank you. So thank you for that. Of course. And congratulations on the, 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 yes, the very high numbers of listeners. Great ratings, yep. Oh. All right, so let me give you a typical scenario. Uh, to start with. And I'm going to give you a great story right after that. The typical scenario for, let's say for lawyers, because there's all kinds of negotiations. There's all kinds of contexts. There's lawsuits, there's contracts, there's employment, joint venture. I have a list here, development, contractors, suppliers, entertainment, there's all kinds of things which provide a negotiation platform or context. But the typical one that a lot of people see on television and I experience all the time is courtroom negotiations. And There's always like this flawed model in courtroom negotiations. You go in front of the judge. It's now everybody's exhausted from two or three years of, you know, exchange of information called discovery. The the court doesn't want to try the case. Uh, It's going to be expensive and long. Uh, If you have to pick a jury, you know, it's going to be long. (laughs) Nobody wants to serve. So there you are. And the judge says to the plaintiff, plaintiff, what are you looking for? Hundred bucks, you know. They just throw some kind of number out there, and then they look at the defense and they say, uh, "Well, what's your reply?" Five, five dollars. So right away <laughs> we start with the polarization, and the tug of war begins. And there's a the mindset that if I give up a dollar, it's one less dollar for me and one more dollar for you. And and then there's all this emotion that's attached to money. Uh, you know, I'm winning, I'm losing. It's and I'm like, I, I look at it very differently. First thing you got to do, no matter what, is do your homework, okay? And you can't start with just numbers. I'm going to give you a quick story. Mm -hmm. A long time ago, in another county, I was given a file. uh, An attorney was retiring, and I I was given the file because the person was going to move out of state and give up the practice of law. And they said, okay, this is what we got. We have a sophisticated client. They went into a deal. They leased some equipment because of COVID, the equipment was not usable. Imagine like something like, say, dental equipment where you know, you're in people's faces and yeah. this is at the height where you can't have personal contact mm-hmm. six feet away the whole bit. So there was sort of like this impossibility of performance thing. But I was told, ah, it's all boilerplate. There's not much you can do. So I'm like, well, that's not really that good. That doesn't give you much to, to work with. So I looked at this very carefully. So the first path is the lease says X, you want to pay Y, and there becomes the tug of war. Right. I looked at this and I said to the client, who is a very sophisticated person, I said, did you look at what you signed? And he goes, yeah, yeah, it's standard. I said, did you really look at that that really fine print? Do you see what, what's in there? He goes, well, what did you find? I said, well, the company is in Texas and they want – Wyoming law, just changing it up. All right. Mm-hmm. So, so I said, so I made a motion to amend the answer that says, look, nobody hears from Wyoming. 
The judge doesn't know Wyoming law. None of us are members of the Wyoming bar. I don't know how you're going to apply Wyoming law. And it just so happened when I looked up the particular law, there was a lot of escape clauses under Wyoming contracts to obviate the harshness of the COVID situation. So all of a sudden, by doing my homework, I was able to escape the polarization of 105, blah, blah, blah. And I said, how are, you know, how are we going to deal with the fact that nobody's from Wyoming and there's all these defenses and we're going to be scurrying around guessing what a Wyoming court would do? We're not in Wyoming. Apparently, you went to sue us here. And all of a sudden, I changed the entire dynamic of the polarization by doing homework and, and getting sort of a tactical leverage. There's all these people who have all these books, and there are a lot of great books. There's the Harvard Getting to Yes book. There's the book called Never Split the Difference by a, a guy named Chris Voss. I think he was an FBI hostage negotiator. He talks about tactical empathy, and one of his big lines in his negotiations is you present a problem to the other side. Like, well, how am I supposed to do that? You know, like, I guess because he's talking about ransom. Oh, we need a million by a million dollars by tomorrow. Well, how am I supposed to do that? You know, and then you throw the problem back at them. In some ways, I said, well, how are we going to deal with this? So I was able to get a better resolution than the 105, you know, 90, 10, right. <laughs> you know, and this and that where they have to, then maybe you need a mediator and everybody, you know how mediation actually works. You know, it's good. and But they, they just tell each side how terribly flawed their position is to get them to weaken, to get them sort of, sort of in the middle. Um, and then, of course, is how much you're going to spend to save the money. Uh, that's also a big problem is the hemorrhaging of time and money to save a dollar. You know, that's another issue. But you got to do your homework. And then, you know, there's all kinds of styles. There's no one way to negotiate anything. And one of the things that, you know, I talked about, say, in pre-production was the different questions in negotiation is like, number one, who's not going to be the negotiator? Do you have a situation like, like baseball, where you have the starting pitcher, and then you have someone who come in to do the relief pitching, you know, that kind of thing. Do you send the people without authority so that they have plausible deniability, and then they have to, quote, get authority? Uh, you see that sort of like, like with insurance type situations where there are people who are negotiating, and of course, they have to say, I don't have the authority, I got to go get it. And of course, in court, they always say you're supposed to come with authority, but you know, who knows what really goes on behind the scenes. So um, Richard. Then, yeah. Yeah. So just before we go before we go any further, let's even just yeah. recap because there are a couple of key points from this segment and before we get to uh many more tactics that you'll be addressing tonight's show. Number one, do your homework. At such a great and important point. You know, so many people just kind of like dive in. And like, yeah, I know, I, I have everything with me. But if they did the homework, like in the case that you had about Wyoming, because you did that homework, you totally changed the scenario. I mean, completely to, you're like, you probably caught them completely off guard. Like, like, yeah, where did, whoa, where did that come from? And it was legit. You're like, you found it in there. It said it's, it's going to be judged by the, 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 the laws of Wyoming. And that, so like, I mean, you caught them flat-footed, I imagine. Well, what I said was, I could either, this is my only case, but I could start calling people who you're suing. They're all in the court system, and I could just whisper the defense <laughs> <laughs> to, to all the people, or we, we can settle this up and I'll just go away quietly. So you decide. <laughs> wow. So that, I mean, the importance of doing homework. Um, and the second point is, what's your plan? Meaning this, this is this is not necessarily just for a courtroom scenario. This is in a business negotiate a negotiating scenario. Um, maybe actually, like, you know, like Richard said, it's a good good point. You know, a good cop, bad cop type of thing. You know, you send in someone with a little bit less experience, and then and then let's let's hear them out, and then they come back. And they, did you have the authority? You didn't have the authority. You know, that that's that's maybe you could just explain that one more time, and then we go to commercial break. It's it's not really about experience so much as you know they're handcuffed from giving the other side too much but one like you ever watched like, like the show with the um like the antiques and this and that where they call the expert in for an evaluation 
in in all negotiations where you feel you need somebody to give you some expert insight, call them in. You know, sometimes it's like if you can't do the homework because it's not something you could research, mm-hmm. maybe you want to ask somebody who's an expert in this field. You know, like let's say you're, you're trying to recover some kind of damage. Well, call in the plumbers and the drywall people and this and that or whatever and say, look, what is this going to cost? And get real numbers. In other words, have real expertise, facts, homework, because you can only negotiate with real facts and real information as opposed to this is what I want or this is what I need. Or you know, I mean, just the, plain and, like like emotional stuff. It's going to cost a million dollars. Like whoa, you know, like right. what's the data? Right, and then you know, everybody also this. They I got to go high because I'm going to end up compromising. And sometimes <clears throat> there's not really necessary a place for that. Uh, mm-hmm. Sometimes you want to come in to a negotiation and being really reasonable, really with a lot of backup, and then just really holding as much ground as you can. But that's like a nuance. It kind of depends on the situation, depends on who you're dealing with, depends on it, what the form is and if you're in front of a judge or mediators or whatever. Because a lot of times I'll say to people, I won't do that. Let's try this instead. And you'll you'll give all your backup. You'll play all your cards. You say, this is infinitely reasonable. And then you kind of stick to it. And what you have to do then challenge them and says, look, I understand you want a better deal, but this is what really is I, I know that chris voss talks about the book about what's fair and fair is used as a weapon and then you have to turn around and try to say that it's not fair and then it becomes another another tug of war but yeah tonight show master negotiating tactics and whatever industry you're in i mean we're speaking with a noted attorney but whatever industry you're in you have to master certain skills whether you're negotiating a, a salary a contract or Hopefully not, but a dispute. In fact, at the beginning of the show, Richard Solomon mentioned, uh, you know, let's say it's a court scenario and you got a hundred dollars on one side and five bucks on the other side. Now, wait a second, Richard. I mean, come on, let's call a time out there. If that's it, now, you know what? Unfortunately, when people become when it becomes emotional and people become crazy, yes, they'll fight over that $95. By the way, I'm afraid to ask how much someone would spend. Imagine the one that's trying to get the hundred. <laughs> and they're spending like fifty thousand dollars over that ninety-five bucks. Come on, guys! <laughs> well, believe, believe it or not, in small claims court, you know, it, you you actually see people literally fighting over the smallest amounts of money, and they come back, you know, multiple times, you know, for either. See, I mean, it's just it's, it's emotion. Yeah. It's emotion. That it's 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 emotion. It's in the kishkas. I am not gonna give an inch. I mean, it's just that's right. Well, that's why you need outside advisors to sort of help the decision-making process. And sometimes it's in the court system. And sometimes it's your advocate. You know, there's a reason why the person who's in the negotiating um, seat, like, like you know, like, for example, actors and uh, things like that, they have agents. And the agents do the booking. And they negotiate because this way the person is removed from – yeah, you know, yeah, the from fric- the back the and friction. forth. That's correct. You know. Because if there's a negotiate this, you know, let's let's be honest. We're all we're 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 humans, we're creatures, we're creatures created by God, and and we're 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 wired with emotion. Right? I think what the, the the stat is that we you know decision making is what ninety percent emotional and then ten percent, you know, factual based. And that's that's the reality. So you're right. If someone's negotiating with an actor, and it's let's say it's a uh, I don't say brutal negotiating uh, scenario, but you know they go back and forth. By the time by the time it's all settled, you know the the you know, they could ruffle the feathers, so to speak, and and that could affect the quality of the performance. So or the relationship or the relationship, and and meanwhile that 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 can't afford to ha- have that happen right the actor on the set it's got to do his job perfectly yeah right now what, one thing that my father taught me who's he's a great negotiator uh you got to be able to walk away one of the most powerful negotiating tools is not to necessarily agree to anything if you can if you can it depends again on you know, the if scenario you're in a lawsuit, yep. you know if you're in a lawsuit it's that but let's say you're, you're, you're looking to buy something and for some reason, 
you just don't feel that the price is right for you. There's nothing that says if the negotiation doesn't go past a certain point, they have to keep negotiating. It's, there's a very there's a gigantic power in walking away and saying, "All right, look, not for me. Sorry, maybe maybe next time," and that's okay. And most people don't really do that. They kind of get up, and it's sort of like you know this whole you got to win. We have to be winners. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the winning is actually not losing, <laughs> you know, right. and, or not getting into a bad deal. Or, 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 you know, you, you got to just say, look, uh, there's alternatives. There are other people. There's other suppliers. There's other vendors. You know, one of the things that's great about having the internet is you get to see the whole marketplace, and you can get a lot more information very quickly. And who knows what AI will provide mm-hmm. to that equation? But, but you don't necessarily have to make a deal. Not everything is deal worthy. And not every negotiation has to end in some kind of handshake deal. Uh, now, but again, it depends. Yeah. You know, the problem is, I guess I have to be very clear. There's no size that fits all. There's no one rule. There's no one maxim. There's so many different things. I know that in the book, Never Split the Difference, uh, the FBI hostage negotiator says, how do you compromise when there's hostages? You know, they keep two, we keep two. I mean, you know, like, yeah. how does that work? Yeah. You know, you have to really look out for the very safety of the people and and deal with some high stress things. And he talks about that, but we don't have that, but it, it gives you a lot of insights. And then there's the other book that I referred to. It's called Start With No, but everybody's got a completely different viewpoint. And I think it's not only the viewpoint, it's your communication style, where you are in the hierarchy of things, your power position, your powerless position, um, uh, what the scenario is, what's the goal. I think it's very important to know what your goals are. Um, A lot of times you have to look at what do you actually need to get out of this negotiation? Sometimes when you're on the paying end, you want to pay as little as possible, but there's intangible benefits. Maybe there's something that you can get by settling early, like maybe you don't have a claim on your insurance or there's not going to be a public record of a dispute. So maybe you pay a little bit more for that advantage. Um, sometimes you have to be very creative in negotiations. Like maybe the other side could give you something like a service that they provide that's kind of inexpensive for them, but of great value to you. So to maybe break the impasse, you say, look, why don't you waive this? And I'll take so much of that to offset this. Um I'm, I, I'm trying to think of how to rephrase this situation, but a situation where somebody made a huge mistake Ouch. and they didn't want to own up to it. And, and I was trying to say to them, look, you've got this as sort of an asset and you're squandering it. Why don't you provide that to us? And this way, you don't feel like you're writing a check. Right. Because it's, you know, when, when it comes to writing check, people have arthritis and pains and, <laughs> You know, all these things that just, you know, they, the sling won't, you know, they can't get the hand out of the sling to write the check or or somehow they can't push the button to transfer the money. It's, you know, they, they have all these problems, impediments. So they say, look, I know you don't want to write the check. It's the fingers may be in a splint. They're broken. I know. But this is how we get away with not having to do that. Now, one really important point is communication style. Mm-hmm. I know you had one of your past guests was James Rosebush. Yeah. And we talked about communication. We talked about humor. And, I'll, you know, sometimes you have to use a little bit of humor in the right place to break the tension. And I remember a situation where my client missed a deadline and we owned it. And I said, you, and I said to the other side, you know what this reminds me of? And they're like, what? They didn't know what I was going to say. Right. He said, it reminds me of the far side comic where you see Noah's Ark with all the animals <laughs> sailing off into the sunset. And you see two dinosaurs at the dock and they're saying, was that today? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you try to bring a little bit of humor to break it up, bring humanity, get some of the emotion out of it. <laughs> You know, you, you try to, you know, do do the right things. It's like, you know, 
there was another there's another standard joke that I use also in the negotiations. Like let's say there's a bunch of defendants and everybody's gonna have to pay something to kick in. And I'll say something like, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of a joke where these two guys are on the Titanic and the Titanic is sinking, and the last two guys on the part of the boat that's out above the water, everybody else is in the life rafts or even worse. And it reminds me, and one guy starts crying, and they're about to go down. And the other guy says, Why are you crying? It, it's not your boat, <laughs> you know, like, right. like I, that. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I, you, got, I, you got to break it up. You got to break it up, yeah. but you got to do it in the right place, the right time. You can't be um, insulting and you can't be uh, doing it, but you got to do it. Sometimes you do it in the hallway, you do it just to show humanity that you're still real people that you know you want to get there you always want to show respect i think it's very important to communicate to the other side that you acknowledge the realities i think that's not really done it's like look i know that you want a b and c but i need c d and e or and, and you know and i guess that's where the book getting to yes is all about is to try to find the the things that sort of everybody could agree to and build up from there but it, it kind of depends but I think what misses the point in many negotiations is just it's just 100,000, 5,000, 100,000, 5,000, not a penny more. I can't believe this. And, and you got to break that. You have to talk about concepts. You have to communicate. You have to be humane and show humanity. You must be respectful and differential. And a lot of times negotiations get very heated. You can imagine what it's like where, let's say you're on the phone, you're just doing a conference call, and it's like the lawyers and the clients, and then there's always this tipping point where all of a sudden the voices start getting raised, and then there's the accusations and the finger pointing, and then the response, and then it just starts spiraling out of control. Hmm. And if you can, you got to be able to put the brakes on that on your side saying, well, look, look, we're, we're, we're about trying to move forward, all right? trying about moving forward and you have to use a gentle voice and you have to maybe even tell your own side, look, let's that we're here to move forward because obviously you're negotiating because you couldn't reach an agreement. Right. You know? So it's obvious that there's some kind of impasse problem, whatever. Cause if the job is like, Hey, Rich, you can have a, you know, your own radio show. will give you X dollars to start tomorrow. And it's like, great. (laughs) You know? But but nothing seems to be that easy. Everything's like, what about this and what about that? And I need this and can you do that? And I need staff, blah, blah, blah. And all that's got to be worked out. And that's where you need homework, uh, advisors, maybe disinterested third parties, both to speak for you and to advise you. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, some of the most important people you'll ever get advice from are from CPAs. And I say that as a lawyer. You know, people will say, no, no, we need to get a lawyer involved. I'm like, I- I'd call the accountant first because if it's about numbers and finance and implications and tax and this and that, I'd rather find out from a tax expert or financial expert uh, where where this is going to go first because not every answer is a legal answer. Mm. Um, and negotiations aren't necessarily legal. They're very psychological. Right. And that's where communication is about psychology different being differential and respectful is about psychology knowing the timing knowing when to start knowing when to take a break it's all psychological uh, now, unfortunately a lot of that doesn't come without experience and sometimes hard lessons of failure build your experience now in preparing for the show when we reviewed the notes you had a line and this is what you've been talking about but I just want to hone in on this before we go to commercial break can't think of a number in particular it becomes a tug of war. Numbers have emotion attached, and, and that's whether you believe it or not. That's that's the reality. So if someone's at a hundred, someone's at 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 uh, you know five, there's a number. Then you're you're anchoring in, you're digging in. You're suddenly so. Perhaps you could again just come back at that. The importance okay. of like removing any items or any elements that that force the mind to dig in and then there's 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 there's, there's no room for compromise 
one of the things that you see a lot of is in the hallway or, you know, we can't go below a hundred. We, we got to get more than 200. We, we, you know, it's, and then what happens is you're, you're given a parameter. It's like, we cannot settle. We not, we cannot spend more than three hundred thousand dollars. Period. I don't care if we charge caused a million dollars worth of damage. Our budget's three hundred thousand. Well, then you got to start thinking about what you can do to deal with that. Maybe there's bankruptcy. Maybe there's other things. But the problem is, is that when you get just a number, and it may not even be a reality based number. Maybe the person says that's all we could afford. And I'm like. But but that three hundred may cost you six hundred somewhere else. I mean, you got to think very global on a lot of this stuff. So I say, don't really think about just the numbers. There's a totality of experience and consequences out there. Uh, what about the court filings? What about reputation issues? Uh, what about and of course, there's confidentiality agreements. And there's no matter what I say, there's going to be an exception or a footnote to everything. So all of the people out there, I, I know that. But I'm just trying to give guidelines. And the guideline I have is numbers become flashpoints. And as soon as you go below or above numbers, people get agitated. And then the agitated goes to anger. And then, they, then what happens is people aren't so nuanced and polite in their discussions. And then everything becomes inflamed. And then it's the tug of war. You know, not doing this. I'm not doing that. You know, forget it. You know, I knew this was a bad idea. And then everything falls apart. Um, now, good mediators uh, know how to do shuttle diplomacy. You don't always get that. Sometimes maybe you need to buy that. Let's say you're working on some kind of very complicated deal. Now, when everybody's lawyers up, all you're doing is getting reinforcements to your polarized position. Sometimes you need somebody to cool things down and maybe to be the objective voice because that, you know, that's what mediators are supposed to do. So you, you give – now, one thing I always talk about uh, in uh, negotiation, and I kind of kid around about this, um, I'll say to a mediator, look, I know that round one is the airing of the grievances. Can we just get that out of the way? <laughs> because, because sometimes – right. Everybody needs to air all their resentment and anger right. and whatever. So I'll actually say, let's have the airing of the grievances. Let's everybody take 15 minutes, right. have a monologue, and just spew everything that's upsetting you. And then once that's all out, let's then let's talk. And believe it or not, that actually works, but it depends. You know, it depends on the circumstance. Sometimes it's great. Because people feel like they need to be heard and it gets it out of them. Right. And it's like, all right, we can move on now. Because a lot of times people feel voiceless in this world and they want to be heard. And they feel that their grievances have not been acknowledged or recognized. And sometimes to just get that out will aid in the negotiation process. But again, it's not one size fits all. And these are sort of just clues as to what may work in a particular situation. And it may not. Sometimes yeah. it's highly appropriate. Sometimes it's a terrible idea. Yeah. But these are just – the problem is over the multiple decades I've been doing all of this, there are times when this idea, this kind of style, this approach, this format will actually do something. Because what ultimately what you really want is you need progress and you need to move the ball forward. Yeah. You need to get past the stuck – and the only way to get unstuck is to have some method of either communication or style or formatting or intervention to get people to loosen up. Because in the end, unresolved disputes just fester and cause. Oh no, 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 no! There has to be has to be a, a, an end game in mind. But my guest is Richard Solomon, noted attorney, and tonight's show is Master Negotiating Tactics. By the way. Among uh, your materials, what was the book you wrote about uh, what how to fight oh. and win and what Win winning in the small claims court, winning in the New York small claims court. Oh, that's <laughs> a, a simple step by step guide for everyone. Now out of print, but you, you can always call hey. me and I'll. Hey, I'll that's give you out of print. You got to go back and print. That means it was sold out. It was a bestseller. Come on, you got to get back and print, Richard. <laughs> oh, oh, well. In, 
when when the Gutenberg press printed it, it was before the ebook. <laughs> now speaking so of that, doing- and for your centuries of experience, uh, I'm sorry, decades. Okay, <laughs> okay. I mean, are there some like kind of don'ts? Are there certain oh, yeah. things that when, and again, tonight's show is about master negotiating tactics. Are there certain things that someone like, you know, you really shouldn't go there? Just, you know, whatever you do, don't do that. What, what are, right. what are then, some of those? Laundry list. So, uh, number one, unreasonable positions. If you start off with a highly unreasonable position, that's not going to work to your advantage. And, and I don't mean high. I mean, unreasonable. And there's a big difference when you ask for something that's outrageous, like, you know, I need a million dollars. I need a helicopter and a written apology from everybody in the company. Like, you know, <laughs> you can't, you, you know, you just can't yeah, yeah, yeah. push, I mean, sad, but, you know, yeah. but you, you, you would not believe what I have been privy to in the demand list. And I'll, and I'll be like, look, we're not going to get that. Don't even ask. That's not how we're going to start. So you can't be unreasonable. You could be, you know, healthy demands, you know, whatever, but you can't be unreasonable. Uh, you you got to be deferential. I've had people literally during mediations just pick up, walk out, and leave. Like, mm. like I've, I've had people who literally say, I, I ain't going to take this blank anymore. And then they walk out, they hit the elevator button, ding, they're, <laughs> they're gone. And they're like, you know, and then when you call your client, you, you got to come back. I'm gone. Sorry. Done. Do it without me. You know, that's not good. It doesn't doesn't bode well. Um, you know, but I've seen that. Uh, you can't be insulting. Uh, there was We had a mediation in front of a very prestigious mediator. This is a person who I think everybody who is in the legal industry looked up to this particular person. And one of the people was highly insulting just mm. and i'm like i had to pull the guy who wasn't my client and i just said D- do you know who this guy is i mean you can't do this this is this is you know like i don't care that you're you're maybe older than him, but he's kind of close in age to you but this guy is revered and he's really well respected you can't do this and i've seen that uh, i've seen people come in unprepared i've seen people come in with sloppy papers Mm-hmm. incomplete papers you know they're trying to establish something and you're looking and it's like almost like a puzzle you're trying to figure out what the pieces are and there's a lot of pieces in a puzzle that are missing or people don't have uh, they don't have things like let's say they don't have a canceled check they have like the front of the check well how do i know that this was actually right deposited? that it was real you know, yeah. you know or you you get all these things like oh it cost me this well, look, I, I remember a good case that I had where I was in court and I was watching the case before me. Okay. Because you always learn in court. Right. And then, so somebody said, oh, you know, the marshal came in and then I, 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 uh, all my stuff was put on the street. And then the judge was like, well, do you have any proof of anything? No. Do you have any pictures? No. Do you have any receipts? No. Well, then, you know, what do you have? Oh, but, but it was like $50,000 worth of stuff. And I'm like, for fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff, you'd have either uh, insurance on it, or you would have had an inventory. You'd have phone, cell phone pictures, you know, something. And the court was like, "You need to come back with some proof because uh, you're not giving me anything." And you know, it was an important lesson to watch, which is you got to be prepared and you have to have backup. Um, you'd be surprised how many people come either empty-handed or not enough copies. I mean, certain things like let's say. You know, even though now we're still in the virtual world and it's all Zoom and you could do screen sharing, if you're going to give like some kind of presentation, maybe you should have like a package and a copy for every side. So one for us, one for you, one for the mediator or whatever, or you exchange just you and the other side. Um, Even if you're doing something like salary negotiations, maybe it's important to come in with a stack of information about what other people get in other kinds of endeavors at this level. Because, you know, the, the, it's going to be the tug of war. Well, we can only afford this. And you've, we're going to say, look, I have job listings from, you know, blank uh, companies. Uh, and they're all offering $127,000 as an average. You know, 100 to 100, 
60 and then kind of in the middle mm-hmm. and you know your average of like say 85 is like like really below what other people are whatever and then you say look and then new york city it's higher whatever but you got to come in and you have to have handouts and you have to have compelling handouts and things that are on the mark you know it's like you can't come into a mediation about so let's say or just a discussion or negotiation about salary and and you're talking about i don't know like how much furniture you're going to get in your office that's <laughs> that's not where you start you know or what you need uh, or how much staff you're going to have you got or or you, you bring materials so but you got to come prepared now on that point in fact after the commercial break would love to discuss from the, let's say, the positive side. When someone is negotiating to get something, they don't want to you know, damage the relationship, but they're going, it's not a matter of settling. It's not a matter of mediating. It's a matter of getting what you want to get through negotiating and yet at the same time making sure to maintain the the uh, a great standing in the relationship. Uh, before we go to a break, Richard, how can people find out more about you? What's your phone number and your website? All right. The Solomon Channel.com, all those S O L O M O N channel.com. And it's 516 371 4924. 516 371 4924. And if you have commercial truck criminal tickets, I. I'm especially interested in those. <laughs> yeah, no, he, uh, Richard. Richard is the address. I mean, I know, you know when when necessary to reach out to Richard. You definitely want him on your side. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Tonight's show: Master Negotiating Tactics, and we're speaking with noted attorney Richard Solomon. Certainly, you want him on your side if you need a great attorney. And thank you. Um, you know, for, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. We're not going to discuss anything confidential in the air, but thank you, Richard, for uh, all your great work on when when needed. Uh, now, before the break, we had mentioned that we want to spend the last, we have roughly uh, less than 10 minutes left to the show. We want to address negotiating tactics when you're looking for something, you, you want to maintain a, uh, a, a, you know, a, a, a great, pristine relationship with the individual. And so it's not a matter of in a courtroom where you're trying to settle and who's going to be left with what, but rather whether it's for, uh, let's, say, let's say, a company with a client. This is a great example. Company with a client. And there's some points that just, it, you know, some of it is price, some of it is um, the arrangement doesn't make perfect sense. And there's going to need to be some give and take, but at the same time, there needs to be a great relationship that remains intact. It's not like they're settling and that's it. And then they both sides never have to talk to each other again. No, that's not the scenario. Here, they're coming together, but there's some delicate stuff that needs to be worked out. What are some of your takes on that in terms of mastering the negotiating tactics? And that's and by the way, in this scenario, I'm going to include, let's say someone is fundraising. Let's say it is a capital campaign, a major building campaign, and someone is negotiating for a million dollar gift, right? They're, they must maintain great relationships. They're, they, they, they want the million dollar gift, but there's some give and take with the donor. What do you say to, to that type of scenario? Number one is creativity. Uh, what is often lacking in most negotiations is to break free from linear thinking. It's this versus that. I need to get this and you need to give up that. And sometimes I say, look, where where could be where could we be creative? So let's say, for example, with a fundraising thing. Maybe there's special perks. We could let you in early. We can name this after you. We can give your people this. We could provide that. Uh, maybe you want to host an event here. We'll provide the place for free. You know, it, it can't be just we're going to get a million dollars and we're going to give you a thank you. You know, <laughs> sometimes it's more than that. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, we'll put you in our magazine. We're going to put you in our newsletter. We'll do something nice for your clients. Well, whatever it is. I mean, it right. depends. But but there's got to be creativity. And smart people need to sit down and say, what is what is a good expression of both gratitude in a situation like this and what could we give back 
that's meaningful to the other side, that's worth value to them, that makes their donation valuable. Because if it's just, look, I'm going to give you a million dollars, I'll deduct it, and you get a thank you, it, yeah. then what, you know, there's, yeah. there's no incentive, yeah. you know? So the question is, how do you make it enticing? Yes, they name the building after you, but, you know, for how long? After 50 years and the next donor comes in, you know, do they take out, you know, the, yeah. the, the, right. the, 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 the plaque. chisel? Yeah, yeah. Knock out the <laughs> and plaque. Start, and yeah. The, yeah. yeah. And if it was the Solomon building and now it's the Jones building, yeah, you know, like, it's hey, like, hey, you know, excuse me. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't know there was a, you know, an expiration date on yeah. the, uh, the money. So you got to ask yourself, what could we give and what could we do that's just meaningful and, and that shows appreciation? And But that also sh- it, it extends to uh, like contracts and incentives and bonuses and milestones. You know, I think it was a, a big deal for actors to get residuals on reruns uh, way back in the day. And I forgot who it was, but somebody originally, when they did a, 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 a TV show, said, no, I want I want a piece of this because you're not paying me enough up front. And then they actually made a lot of money because in those days, a lot of people got paid and then it was syndicated and rerun forever and no one got any money. So, you know, you could ask for creative solutions like making money on the back end, maybe uh, taking care of some kind of situation. Maybe your conference room is always available on two hours notice if it's not booked for either my group or my business. I want presentations. I want to have an annual conference there. I want to have my shareholders meetings there. I want to have a press conference from there, whatever it is. Um, You know, maybe I I want to do a documentary about the donation and I need you to participate in it or we'll do the documentary for you and we'll put it up in all of our social media to show our gratitude to enhance your brand and our partnership. There's a lot that can be done. Uh, Tickets, (laughs) tickets to events, pardon me. Um, Maybe, uh, you know, maybe you do something. You have like a special uh, cinema, special things and you, 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 you give back, I don't know, 500 free tickets and they can distribute it to people that are important to the donor's circle of influence. But there's all kinds of things. And what I've noticed uh, in a lot of fields is lack of creativity. Mm. It's just, I need this and let's get moving. I don't have a lot of time for you. And I think the whole post-COVID environment of emails and texts and not being in the same room with people has really blunted the ability of people to have coffee, sit down, brainstorm, be creative. And I think that that's been lost, especially on the younger generation, which is more high tech than in person. Such an important point that you raised that, you know, the human element, I mean, we're, we're all human. <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, we can never overlook the emotion the emotional factors that 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 come into play in any type of negotiating scenario tonight's show master negotiating tactics and we were treated to uh you know to, and and of course thank you so much richard for carving out i mean on a typical uh you know sunday okay, we pre-recorded so when we recorded the week you know prior you know that that to carve out uh, an hour of your day to share with the audience is a big deal. We're not going to ask you on the air how much you charge an hour, but uh, we certainly appreciate it. (laughs) Now, Richard, how can people get in touch with you? Again, Richard's someone who you want on your side when needed. Um, Richard, how can people get in touch with you? 516-371-4924. 516-371-4924. My office is located in Nassau County, but I'm I'm pretty flexible where I need to go. And the phone gets you everywhere. And then, of course, if you want to learn a little bit about my radio, it's uh, thesolomonchannel.com, and I have a whole YouTube presence and all and that And by the way, stuff. so even on, on, the Sol- on the Solomon Channel, they could find out more about your, your uh, you know, to get in touch with you as an attorney. Yeah, there's, there's, there's ways Information to contact there. me. But there's nothing like the phone, 516-371-4924. Because there's nothing like human connection. I <laughs> nailed it. This wraps up a great edition of Mind Your Business. Tune in again next Sunday night for another great edition of Mind Your Business right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. Have a successful week. 
Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to this channel and be notified every single time a new video goes live. Don't miss out on any of the weekly interviews that I have with top business leaders, sometimes Fortune 500 executives. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications.